we welcome you to the final day of the G-Force Lock and Safe Holiday Classic here at Morgantown High School. I'm Luke Wiggs. To my immediate right is Daniel Woods as it's the final day of action and the second to final game as Morgantown High will take on the Spartans of Bishop Walsh. As I mentioned, Luke Wiggs, Daniel Woods here directly below us on the court. Morgantown High working from right to left in the white uniforms, the black for the Spartans. They'll work left to right. Hopefully we'll have the video portion of our broadcast up here ready in just a couple of moments, but the opening tip won and controlled by the Spartans who will line up like this. William Patterson, the seven foot junior, the man to watch for in the middle, TJ Robinson, Daniel Dormu, Travis Roberts, and Mikey Williams. Already hanging the big man, Patterson can't get it to go. Turned away at the rim. And Daniel, it was a pretty impressive victory as Sharon Young racing up the floor gives it to Brooks Gage. Morgantown will work the ball around the perimeter. Uh, impressive victories for both of these teams yesterday. Uh, that's right, first for Morgantown, 30 point win uh, against the top five opponent in Cabell Midland in class quad A in the state of West Virginia. And then Bishop Walsh handling business against uh, a stout West Virginia class double A opponent in Notre Dame last night. Alec Poland getting his shot blocked by Patterson. Patterson trying to run the floor. Williams through the outlet pass that was too far past him. So 45 seconds gone, no score. And full court pressure applied by TJ Robinson and the Spartans of Bishop Walsh. Morgantown, as they get it into Brody Davis. And we have the video portion back on. Happy to have you with us. Here's Gage, a three in transition. Twice off the rim, no good. It's rebounded by Travis Rogers. Alec Poland, Brooks Gage, Jalen Goins, Sharon Young, and Brody Davis. The five on the floor for Dave Tallman. As TJ Robinson driving is fouled, he'll head to the line to shoot a pair. Foul on Brooks Gage. And you look at this roster, T.J. Robinson at the line, uh, a bevy of D1 interest from the players here for Bishop Walsh. It'll be interesting to see what Morgantown does defensively here uh, with so many guys for Bishop Walsh that can get to the basket, as well as the seven-footer inside. And Will Patterson uh, had considered the fact we may see some zone out of the Mohegans. They start out uh, in man-to-man, -man and it's Brody Davis uh, getting lined up with Patterson there. But... Uh, if they can keep these guys in front of them, they've got a shot to stay in this. Well, what's interesting about this Bishop Walsh team is two for two from the line is T.J. Robinson. There is a ton of size in this roster, Daniel, but none of it's on the floor right now, save William Patterson. A lot of 6'6", six, 6'8", six, six, says with the steal here, Mikey Williams lays it up and in as he was able to pick the pocket of Brooks Gage for his first two points. But it's a smaller starting lineup for Bishop Walsh. Uh, that's right. You've got Williams uh, out there at about six foot three and beyond. Uh, him and then you've got Roberts at six foot six. It really is just Patterson in there. Uh, that's the size difference uh, for Bishop Walsh in this one, at, at least to this point. We do know they've got that size off the bench, but Morgantown matches up pretty well to start, if we're being completely honest. Big three from the wing, Sharon Young gets Morgantown on the board with 6.15 to go here first quarter. Sharon Young was instrumental as they get it down low and the score by William Patterson. He got the positioning down low uh, it was just one-on-one. -on -one. He was able to take advantage of the big man. That was a great feed from Robinson. That's really going to be uh, the matchup to watch, save for the, the post play for Morgantown on the defensive end. Uh, the sophomore point guard, Sharon Young for Morgantown, TJ Robinson uh, for Bishop Walsh, two really good young players uh, who are able to distribute well for their teams but also put the ball in the bucket themselves, both drawing D1 interest already in their second year of high school. Here's Goins. Looking for Young, who had 14 points in that win against Cabell Midland. Another three attempt by Gage. Again, it's no good. And it's cleared the other way by Dormu. Just a blur in transition. Has to give it up. He does so to Roberts. That pass tipped, outletted down the floor from Morgantown. With an opportunity to take the lead. That shot was altered of the slap off the glass by Dormu. It's no good, that try. And here comes Bishop Walsh again. Roberts straightaway three is no good. Rebounded by Gage. Great job there on the glass by Morgantown. Gage and Davis both getting a body on Patterson. Push him out of the lane. That's something they're going to have to do. Bishop Walsh does not really send a lot of guys the offensive glass uh, so far in these first couple games. They really rely on Patterson to get it done in that aspect. Young again has tied things with three minutes gone here in the first quarter. Sharon Young had 14 yesterday and all six of Morgantown's points here in the first quarter. Here's driving and not able to finish with the left hand. T.J. Robinson draws the foul from Brody Davis, and he'll head to the line. Uh, 
TJ Robinson, six foot two sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey, had 13 points yesterday. Bishop Walsh picked up their fifth win. They defeated Notre Dame. And he's got three points there, all coming from the line. Bishop Walsh regaining the lead, increased to two. About four and a half minutes left to play. They try to beat this full court man pressure. Young loses it. It's turned over to Mikey Williams. And it looks like an offensive foul that time. Williams extended the elbow and he pushed Goins there on the baseline. Williams literally added to this Bishop Walsh roster two days ago. He's not even on the roster that uh, was submitted to the athletic department here at Morgantown High uh, to print in the programs, but uh, he's the one that's garnered the most Division One interest so far, particularly at the power conference level, and it looks like it's going to be Jalen Goins that gets matched up with him today. Uh, Goins was the one who drew the assignment last night of Chandler Schmidt, did an outstanding job on him against Cabell Midland. Young's got the hot hand, but it won't go that time. Twice off the rim, no good. Williams with a bevy of Power 5 offers. Driving to the rim there. This is Robinson, shot turned away, rebounded by Morgantown. LSU and Illinois have both offered the man who had 16 points in his first day as a Spartan. Here's Goins. And the pass out to Brody Davis is no good as Morgantown is really getting quality looks. This is Nekrasevich who's checked into the game. The Israeli native, he clears the break the other way, now tries to save the ball in bounds and throws it right to Poland. It's a two on one, a spin by Young and the lay with the right hand. Tied up at eight, 3.30 to go here, first quarter. Morgantown putting up a heck of a fight. A couple of substitutes about to check in. One of them, Cam Dancer. It's getting rowdy here at the Rowdy Center. Pass up top to Williams, he traveled. Vila Slanina, the Lith Lithuanian native, excuse me, checks in along with Mikey Allen. Dancer in for Morgantown High along with Ethan Morrow, the senior. And Daniel, about four and a half minutes in, Morgantown certainly holding their own. Absolutely right, tie game coming up on the five minute mark. And it's it's really been Sharon Young keeping them uh, on pace. He's got all eight points for Morgantown, but defensively, the Mohegans have really been up to anything uh, that Bishop Walsh has been able to give them. They've forced them into some turnovers, caused some mistakes for Bishop Walsh that they just haven't been able to recover from. And Morgantown's taking advantage. That one forced by Young, here's Williams. Now Nakrashevich down low, makes the extra pass outside for the open three by Travis Roberts. Roberts, the six foot six senior, 19 points yesterday to lead all scorers in that victory again of Notre Dame to improve Bishop Walsh's record to five and three. Dan Preet, their head coach. Tough, tough schedule for Bishop Walsh this year. Featuring teams like IMG, the Scotland campus, who Morgantown natives will be familiar with. That's where Blake Barkley's playing right now. Wasich as well was a pretty key victory. Here's Poland beyond the perimeter. Morgantown just scanning for openings. And here's one, an open look for three from Goings. On the way, it's good. Jalen Goins was the only starter not in double figures last night for Morgantown, uh, but he hit some of the bigger shots to really start that first run against Cabell Midland. Uh, really brought the entire place to its feet, had an and one three early in the second quarter uh, that really took the wind out of the sails of Cabell Midland early, and it ended up turning into a 30 point lead for, or 30 point win for Morgantown last night. That was Slanina misfiring there. Goins, he'll try his luck in transition. Yes, sir. How about that? A quick five for Goins and a timeout called by Bishop Walsh. Dan Preet wants to talk it over. And you have to say, Daniel, Morgantown, a heck of an effort. They lead 13 to 11. Some quality looks even have been missed from three from Morgantown so far. This lead could be even more drastic. That's absolutely right. And for Morgantown, this is a team that we know can shoot the three. We know have a, has athletes and we know wants to get up and down. That's the type of style that Bishop Walsh wants to play too. But the Morgantown defense, uh, which was so impressive last night, holding a top five team to around 40 points, has been able to slow that attack for Bishop Walsh. They just haven't been able to get a, a lot of points running down the floor. 
as Morgantown's trying to recover. Meanwhile, the Mohegans have gotten up the floor. They've been able to find their shooters. At first, it was a quick eight for Young, like you said, and now it's been five straight for Goins. Uh, it's the kind of situation where Morgantown is so balanced offensively, you can't lose sight of any of those five guys on the floor because any of them can knock down a shot from all three levels. We'll see what the answer is for Bishop Walsh coming out of that timeout. Electing to go to a somewhat smaller lineup than they began the game with. Here's Roberts, right wing three is good. He's hit a couple of triples and the lead right back to the Spartans. Daniel Dormu on the ball for Sharon Young, who has eight of Morgantown's 13 points. The other five coming from Goins. Young, now to Goins. A minute left to play here, first quarter. Awkward exchange recovered by Poland. He's guarded by Mikey Allen. Young thought about it. Now to Cam Dancer. Shorter rotation for Dave Tallman here. Just seven players to get on the floor. Here's Mara driving. The dish down low is just left a little too far behind Dancer. And it's a run out opportunity the other way. Great defense by Goins. He sends Allen's shot away, but it's put up and in by Travis Roberts. Now we have a foul on the backcourt. It's a little ambitious there. Mikey Allen was trying to steal his side some cheeky points with that pressure, and he fouled the Morgantown ball handler. Just young trying to get away uh, against the pressure, and uh, I mean, Allen just grabbed the jersey, and another foul called here. Is things are getting pretty physical. This one's going to go against Young. Just ran right over uh, T.J. Robinson trying to get to the basketball there. So. Uh, officials just really evening things out at this point, it seems, uh, based on uh, the way the fouls have gone so far. It's been a relatively cleanly played game so far, just five fouls total in the first quarter. Here's Robinson looking to get it down low to Roberts, who's double teamed. Now Dormu, 20 seconds left to play here, first quarter, and a three-point lead for the Spartans of Bishop Walsh. It appears to hold for the final shot. Here's Robinson looking to take Danzer off the dribble. Up with the right and scores, T.J. Robinson Gets to the rim, about 10 seconds left. Morgantown struggling to get it in. Now they do so to Goins. Looks to spin away from Roberts. Three seconds, now two. Goins to beat the buzzer, no. A five point lead, that timeout was a very resourceful one, Daniel, from Dan Preet, because it's been nothing but Spartans after that. They're starting to find a little bit more momentum and flex their muscles and with it their length. Uh, that's right, and the athleticism uh, for Bishop Walsh has been the difference, particularly in that stretch. Talked about how they thrive getting out in transition, uh, but really attacking off the dribble, getting into the lane, and then having the ability to kick out to guys like Roberts who are knocked down shooters has been the key so far for them. Uh, the, the ability to penetrate for you know Mikey Allen, Daniel Dormu, TJ Robinson from the perimeter uh, is just something that Morgantown uh, it is having a hard time dealing with, if we're being completely honest. That point of attack defense, I I'm sure, is what Dave Tallman's going to be focusing on here uh, in the break between the quarters simply because the struggles in that regard allowed Bishop Walsh to end the first quarter on an 8 0 run. Uh, again, it's that inside out play that Morgantown has struggled with. We know the Mohegans are at a size disadvantage, and uh, particularly if the big seven footer and William Patterson is back out here in the second quarter, uh, they're going to have to work those issues out, or, or else there's just going to be threes raining down on top of them the rest of this one. Speaking of William Patterson, one of many players in this Bishop Waltz team that's received uh, decent Division I offers. Patterson's been offered by Rutgers. That's big number zero who's back on the floor. Daniel Dormu has picked up an offer from Maine. Along with Frostburg State, Jason Rivera Thomas, number 23, haven't seen him much. Penn State, Stanford, and Northwestern have offered him, and Mikey Williams, probably the most lucrative of the three so far. Here's an open look for three from Mara that rattles in, much needed from Morgantown. Mikey Williams, number five, we mentioned with offers from LSU and Illinois, to name a few. Here's Dormu. Now to Williams, the lead cut down to two. The first action here in the second quarter. It's a tough take by Williams. It rattles out, keeping the play alive as Patterson has a shot blocked. Great defense from Morgantown there to swarm the big man. 30 seconds gone. Morgantown looking to go on a run of their own. Brody Davis sizing up Patterson. will take a deep three-pointer. It's good. Davis gives Morgantown high the lead, a one-point advantage. 45 seconds gone here, second quarter. Obviously, 
the mismatch issue inside for Morgantown is the fact that you've got Davis, who's about 6'5", having to deal with the seven-footer in Patterson, but having essentially five guards or three guards and a couple of wings, however you want to define it, allows Morgantown to pull Patterson away from the basket. They're going to try to do it again there. That time Patterson gets the better of Dancer who tried the three. That was a three for Mikey Williams to give his side the lead and the lay is good there from TJ Robinson. He's got eight and now Dave Tellman will take a timeout. 641 remaining here, 23 to 19 and it seems to me the first uh, 80 seconds or so of the second quarter, maybe a little bit more wide open or end-to-end -end than we saw there in the first quarter. Uh, that's right. I, I was waiting for the pace to pick up in this one because you knew it was going to. What we've seen from Morgantown so far, they want to fill it up. They want to get up and down. They want to shoot the three even in transition if they can't get all the way to the basket. Same goes for Bishop Walsh with their ability to slash to the hoop and kick out like we talked about earlier. Uh, so it, it really did seem just like a matter of time before this turned into a track meet. If you're Morgantown, I think you have the ability to keep up in that kind of scenario. Uh, but at a certain point, you're going to want to slow things down. You're going to want to run offense simply because the quickness that Bishop Walsh possesses getting up and down the floor is superior to what you have. Morgantown, probably the better shooting team, uh, which I think does bode be better for them, particularly in the half court. Timeout over by Dave Tolman. Morgantown High, they're 3-0 in the season. Beat Cavill Midland yesterday, 72-41 was the final of that game. Paced by Brooks Gage is 15 points. They were able to out-rebound Midland 33-18 in the victory, and obviously that's not going to be in the cards today when you've got a 7-footer and William Patterson staring at you. Here's Brody Davis off the screen. They free Sharon Young. Morgantown patient on the perimeter. Pass to Mar in the corner. Now Williams going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sharon Young. Instead, now it's Davis. And Dancer, one of the bigger lineups we've seen from Morgantown. Davis thought about it. Kicks to Mara. He drives back to Davis. Now he'll load up and fire. This one misses everything, and it's out of bounds. That's a more protracted possession for Morgantown, uh, just something we haven't really seen, but it's something uh, that you would have to think Dave Tallman has considered coming into. This is something Dan Preet talked about uh, after their win over Notre Dame last night. Bishop Walsh, whether it's a national competition or just playing locally in the state of Maryland, is used to playing with a 30-second shot clock, uh, which just isn't a thing in the state of West Virginia. They're not playing with one here in the Holiday Classic. So uh, Bishop Walsh not used to defending for that length of possession. We'll see if Morgantown continues to go to that. Obviously, Davis couldn't hit that three, but it was about as good of a look from beyond the arc as Morgantown's got all night. Four-point advantage for Bishop Walsh. Morgantown looking to find some holes in their man defense. Here's Gage as he's guarded by Daniel Dormu. Sharon Young now to Dakoma Neal, who's checked in. Ooh, Gage was open back door there, I think. Davis will take a long step back three, absolutely. Brody Davis with a couple of triples. The lead cut down to one. That shot creation ability for Brody Davis, something new added this year. He's somebody that Morgantown really needed to take a step forward. And having seen him a couple times now, he really has uh, that three-point threat off the bounce is something they really don't have, uh, save for Sharon Young, Brooks Gage, great catch and shoot, great coming off screens, and he does have the ability to put the ball on the floor. Uh, but somebody that can hit that pull-up jumper like Davis, particularly with length to be able to shoot over his defender, uh, is uh, really a, a big weapon for Morgantown that they just simply haven't had in the past. Walsh will size down again. Mikey Allen comes in for the big man, William Patterson. Morgantown had gone to a 2-3 zone on that last possession. Here's Poland, out of Young, to the corner. Davis gets his defender in the air. He'll send away another long one. This time, no good. Now Dormu racing ahead. Lost the dribble, threw it away to Brooks Gage. 4-10 left to play here in the first half. Gage has it knocked into the backcourt. Diving on top of it, Travis Roberts. And a jump ball favors Bishop Walsh. Travis Roberts has eight.
Morgantown student section voicing their disapproval. And not happy with Dan Preet's uh, excursion out onto the floor <laughs> uh, there to call out the offense. And going to get an offensive foul there, but Preet about 10, about 10 feet out onto the court, and the, the Rowdy Society responded in kind, similar to what you saw out of the, the WVU fan base with Dan Hurley of, mm. of UConn a few weeks ago. That foul on Travis Roberts through the elbow there. Morgantown gets the ball back, looking to take the lead. Poland, Goins, Davis, Gage, and Young, the five on the floor, and some miscommunication there. Young threw it away right to Travis Roberts, racing ahead. The Euro finish is good. He's the game's first player to get in double figures. 3.36 left to play here. First half. Young guarded by Mikey Allen. Getting that screen from Goins. Open look for Gage, and he misfires again. It's been a slow start to one of the better shooters in the state of West Virginia. Here's Dormu. Uses up the dribble, up top it goes to Williams, driving into a cluster of white jerseys, and yet he's able to finish. That'll prompt the timeout by Dave Tallman. 27 to 22, 311 to go here, first half. And I think you're starting to see the advantages, Daniel, of Bishop Walsh. Just so many different players that can pick you off the dribble. It was TJ Robinson earlier. Now you see Dormu, Williams, Mikey Allen as well, and even Roberts at six foot six. You know, six foot six is a big man in West Virginia. It's a wing for Bishop Walsh. Five different players that can drive at the point of contact and get to the rim. Uh, that's right. These guys uh, get downhill in a hurry. It's that quick first step uh, that Morgantown is just struggling to deal with, and they're having to play catch up from behind. Help defense hasn't been bad for the Mohegans to this point. They've had those help defenders there to contest. Uh, the problem is, again, you're dealing with more length than you're used to with this Bishop Walsh team. Like you said, Roberts at 6'6 can extend over you. Robinson's got a really long wingspan for a 6'2 guy when he's going to the rim. Uh, so you're having to deal with the fact that these are guys that can finish over top of you and not just have to go through you like a lot of the teams Morgantown's going to face in the state of West Virginia will. Five-point advantage. Mohegan basketball, they trail the Spartans. Young into the front court, guarded by Mikey Allen. That's been the matchup. As he gets a down low to Davis, hangs in the air and scores. Dormu works the ball around to Robinson. Now to Roberts. Mikey Williams now beyond the perimeter. Zone defense again by Morgantown High. Dormu, kick to the corner. Robinson jab step three on the way is no good. Rebounded by Morgantown High. They trail by just a possession. Here's Brooks Gage open for three in transition. It needs to be. It is. Tied up at 27. Brooks Gage got off to a slow start, but hit it that one when it mattered most. Roberts kicking to the corner, driving Robinson with ease to the rim. He's in double figures as well. To join his counterpart, Travis Roberts. Young turned away, throws it to Davis. Swung around to Poland, a deep three on the way from him. Yes, sir! Alec Poland. One point lead for Morgantown High. First really clean look we've seen for Poland. Uh, he's a guy that gets his, gets his points in the flow of the offense. Not a big shot creator, but a physical player who can knock down a shot from the outside. Really goes to work on the glass as well. And he's shown that throughout this weekend. And uh, again, he's not a guy that's going to hunt his own shot, but he's a guy that's going to be a big contributor. Awkward spin to the rim is no good. The tap in by Poland is Brooks Gage. Had nowhere to go, just put it up off the glass, and Poland was able to finish. Three-point lead for Morgantown High. And a technical foul called on Dan Preet. The coach for Bishop Walsh is teed up. Morgantown says thank you very much. He wanted a travel called on Brooks Gage on the spin there, which I didn't really see. And it, it wasn't like Dan Preet was out on the court or, or he was really screaming at the official in any kind of, any kind of derogatory way. He just wouldn't give it up. Uh, uh, he just was making eye contact with the official the entire way down, was signaling the travel. He's still doing it right now. Uh, again, it was a quick whistle on the technical there, in my opinion. Uh, but 
he just wouldn't give it up. He still won't give it up, which, which <laughs> I don't understand. He, he, he just won't stop looking at the officials and signaling for a travel, which, uh, from our vantage point, is actually pretty funny to look at because he's just standing there <laughs> and spinning his hands around in circles. And, I mean, it got him a technical. Wasn't a quick whistle, in my opinion, yes. Uh, but if you're an official and you've had Dan Preet in your ear for the entire first half of this game, and, and again, it's a call like that where – it, it, I, I really didn't see anything that remotely looked like a travel as Gage went to the basket, and he just won't simply give it up. I, I think you're in a position where that starts to become warranted. This is a massive possession from Morgantown High, and right on cue, they throw it away. Here's Mikey Allen looking to finish the and one. That is a unfortunate sequence of events. You get the technical free throws and you get the ball back, Daniel, with a chance to build. Unfortunately, you turn it over and give up the and one on the other end. Yeah, Allen uh, really has proven himself so far to be an outstanding defender out there at the point of attack, just jumped up in the passing lane, uh, and Davis trying to force it in uh, to Poland instead of uh, just really playing more within the flow and and moving the basketball. Allen just able to poke it away, beat, every to the ball, beat everybody to the ball, and, and ends up drawing the foul from behind. Uh, just really, like you said, a, a tough sequence because you turn it over and then you compound it by giving him the three-point play with a foul from behind that really just isn't necessary. Timeout called there by Dan Preet, 34 to 32 our score with a minute left to play here. Morgantown high and Bishop Walsh is, again, you talk about the teams that they played, IMG Academy, the Scotland campus, Wasatch coming into Morgantown for the G-Force lock and safe holiday classic, uh, hoping to pick up two free ones and Morgantown high is giving them all they can handle and then some. So for Dave Tallman, honestly, you can make the argument, Daniel, even if you don't play as well as you did in the second half, you look at this first half of play against the team that's probably going to be the most talented roster you face all year, and it's nothing but positive takeaways. Absolutely right. And, and really, uh, coming down the stretch of this first half, really you don't want to have to take moral victories away if you do end up dropping this one. But the fact that you have a chance to take a halftime lead against a team of this caliber and you picked up a 30-point win against a top-five opponent last night, this has to be seen as a successful weekend already for Morgantown. Oh, which way did he go? Brooks Gage. Unbelievable. He's got five. Spinning and winning, as a lesser broadcaster might say. 30 seconds to play here in the first half. Morgantown leads by four. Here's Allen, now to Williams, he threw it away in the lane. Morgantown has it, Goins, they knocked it away from Nakrasevich. And the Mohegans have a shot at the last shot of the first half. 10 seconds left to play. Here's Gage to the corner, Poland open for three. No good, it's too long. Five seconds left to play. The steal by Gage, the lay is good. What a way to finish the half here at Morgantown High School. 38 to 32, the score, they lead by six over Bishop Walsh. Daniel, your closing thoughts to put a bull in this first half of play. The pace that Morgantown picked up there in the second quarter really proved to be the difference for them. The intensity on both ends of the floor, the, the willingness and the want to push the ball down the floor when they did get it, when they did force turnovers. I, I understand that Bishop Walsh is the more athletic team. They're the quicker team getting up and down the floor. Uh, but Morgantown were the ones pushing the issue there in the second quarter, and that proved to be the difference, giving them a six-point halftime lead. All right, we'll step aside for about nine minutes or so. When we come back, we'll recap the first half point totals. We'll get Daniel Woods' keys to the second half from both teams. But you're watching the G-Force Lock and Safe Holiday Classic presented by Morgantown High School.
And we're back, second half of action about to tip off here. And the G-Force lock and safe. Holiday Classic, 304-591, lock the number to call for G-Force lock and safe. I'm Luke Wiggs, to my immediate right, Daniel Woods. Daniel, give me your keys. The second half adjustments that Bishop Walsh needs to make to flex their muscles as uh, the more talented team, or for Morgantown to get the upset here. Uh, for Bishop Walsh, you have to respond uh, to the intensity that Morgantown's playing with. Uh, the Mohegans came out, particularly there in the second quarter, and just turned around and punched you in the mouth. If you're Bishop Walsh, you need to respond to that. Uh, you need to come out uh, really especially early in this third quarter and, and be able to counter punch in terms of intensity. For Morgantown, you have to keep pushing the pace. You have to keep forcing turnovers. Bishop Walsh is getting frustrated, particularly in the half court. They're forcing things when, they, when they're made to slow down. When they get out in transition, it's a lot of wild shots because of the pace that they're having to play at. If you're Morgantown, keep pushing the pace, keep forcing Bishop Walsh to make tough decisions in transition, and keep forcing them into mistakes that are giving you the ball back. Already some full court pressure applied by the Spartans. As we're about to get underway, an early foul. That foul against T.J. Robinson as they were double teaming Sharon Young. No time off the clock, already a foul. Four white jerseys in the backcourt. They get it into Poland. First action here with Morgantown leading by six in the second half. Davis, now to Gage. Gage had a quiet first half with ample looks from three. Love to see him get going here in the second. They get it down low to Goins. Goins in the lane, now retreats and gives it back to Sharon Young. A patient first set here for Morgantown. Young to the corner. Poland open for three, no. A rebound, Goins tapped it free for a moment. It's saved in bounds by William Patterson. And now Dormu will race down the floor, take an ill-advised transition 15-footer. That's rebounded by Morgantown High. I'm sure adjustments were put in place by Dan Preet for the second half. That certainly wasn't one of them. Absolutely not. And for Morgantown, you're seeing the ball in Sharon Young's hands a lot more here to start the third quarter. I think that's an adjustment that I'm sure Dave Tallman made at the halftime. Young came out, scored your first eight points, hasn't scored since then. Uh, so your sophomore point guard is really the driver of play here for the Mohegans, and I think they're going to try to get the ball in his hands a decent bit more, get him some more looks as the second half goes on. Bishop Walsh. After the Morgantown turnover, had a chance to get it down low to Patterson in transition. Now they dump it down to the big man, but it's too far past his hands. Williams threw it out of bounds. Had the positioning on Poland. And again, Walsh, it was Patterson, scored within the first two minutes of the first quarter. Has been silent since then. There's Goins, sizing up Travis Roberts, gets the ball into the front court. 6.45 remaining here in the third quarter of a six-point Morgantown lead. Here's Young, has the ball knocked free, but a foul whistled on Mikey Williams. Uh, again, Mike Williams, he's done it a couple times. He's picked some guys' pockets, uh, but he puts himself in some dangerous spots where he reaches across uh, the body of the player with the ball in their hand. And uh, again, it's just playing the angles there. Uh, typically, you've got a guy driving to the right, you're sliding to your left. You want to get your left hand in there, try to poke it free. He came across Young's body with the right hand, ended up getting that forearm uh, into his chest and, and pushing him off the ball. It, it's going to be caught every time when you throw an arm bar out like that. That's his second foul. Here's Gage looking to create. Passes down low, Poland wide open, can't finish. Gets his miss, trying to work on the bigger Patterson. He earns a trip to the line. Again, that's just the, the physical work that Alec Poland does inside. He's the de facto five man in the lineup uh, for Morgantown, at least with this starting group listed at 6-1. And he's just going to be the most physical player on the floor 99% of the time, no matter who you put up against him. Talked about it in the first half. He could knock down the open three, uh, but he really does the majority of his work on the offensive glass, and it continues there. Poland shot the technical free throws back in the first quarter, or first half, rather. Now three for three for the charity stripe. Patterson will check back out. Another one for Poland, an eight-point lead for Morgantown High, 90 seconds gone. 
Daniel Dormu, now to Roberts. Swung around to TJ Robinson. Back up top to Mikey Allen. He has three of his team's 32 points. Roberts again, sizing up this zone pressure, driving and scoring that time TJ Robinson. And he's got an impressive 12 points. Robinson had 13 yesterday in their win against Notre Dame. Here's Poland, left corner three on the way, no good. Left long, and Allen pulls it down. Tries to throw the pass down the floor in transition, and that's been really key, I think, Daniel, uh, limiting the opportunities for the Spartans in transition. This is a team that's much faster than Morgantown High, but that doesn't matter if you plug the right holes. Uh, that's right, and for Morgantown, it's, it's a weird thing to consign yourself to or resign yourself to uh, with a size disadvantage like the one the Mohegans are playing with. Uh, they pretty much know that they're not going to get much on the offensive glass. So when a shot does go up, uh, they can send guys back to defend in transition rather than crash the glass with three or four guys and just have one guard getting back. Uh, they, can, they can send, you know, two guys to the glass, you know, Poland, or, or Goins or Davis or, or whatever permutation of guys you want to do that with, send just a couple of guys to get glass, get three or four back in transition, and, and really shut down uh, what Bishop Walsh is trying to leak out and get going down the floor. That was a backcourt violation. Davis a little limp after that one. He checks out. Dancer comes back in. Here's a deflection by Young. Can he save it in bounds? He does, but right to Daniel Dormo, who throws it to Dancer. Down the floor, here comes Morgantown High. Young in front of his own bench, makes the extra pass to Gage, sidesteps around the defender, wide open, it's a little off. Poland tries to tip it to a teammate, and Sharong steals it from Williams. Now Young drives, kicks down low to Poland, gets a defender in the air, can't score, but he'll earn another trip to the free throw line. And we talked about the fact that Sharon Young hasn't scored since the opening minutes of this game. Uh, eight points, they were the first eight for Morgantown, uh, but you've really seen him assert himself with his ability to distribute uh, really on the fly that live dribble passing that you hear people talk about so much that the modern point guard has to have the ability to get into the lane, still have the ball moving, and, and see the options that you have to kick the ball out. He's done that extremely well, particularly here in the third quarter, finding Poland a couple times inside, as well as looking for Gage and Goins' as shooters on the outside. Poland in double figures now. 41 to 34, our score, five minutes to go here, third quarter, remains perfect from the line, has 11 points, six of which coming by way of the free throw line. Here's a steal by Sharon Young. He's been the game's most impactful player, surely, on both ends of the floor. Crosses over Williams, uses up his dribble in the lane, now to Dancer. To Goins it goes as he penetrates, back to Young. He fires the three, it's no good, it's long, but he chases his miss, oh, he lost it off his foot and out of bounds. 50-50 balls had been all Mohegans up until that point. It goes back to Bishop Walsh and the Spartans trail by eight. Here's Robinson in to run. The point for the Spartans. Now to Mikey Allen. Morgantown sticking in their zone. Mikey Williams now, right side. Spartans team that hasn't seen a lot of zone this year is a tough shot forced up. That's no good by Williams. Tapped up a couple of times. Morgantown comes up with it. Nakrashevich tried to use his length there. Here's Goins. Gets Nakrashevich in the air and scores. Seven points now for Goins. Ten point lead for Morgantown High. Four minutes to go here, third quarter. Very important possessions here for Bishop Walsh to try to climb back into this game. Here's an open look for three from Roberts, and that's much needed for him. That's his third triple. And we just haven't seen a lot of motion away from the ball for Bishop Walsh against this Morgantown zone. Finally, you get Roberts starting in the high post, catches, or cuts out, excuse me, and gets an open look. If they would move off the ball against this zone, they're going to get better looks than they have, but they've really just had to force a lot of stuff off the bounce so far. Goins now has nine points. He hits that 15-footer. Deflection again by Young out of bounds. It remains with Bishop Walsh. Daniel Dormu checks back in for T.J. Robinson. Dormu is scoreless. 
a Washington, D.C. native. Dancer will come out, and Tacoma Neal will come in. Okay, here's Dormu. 3.15 to play here, third quarter. Now to Roberts. From 15, he scores again. Travis Roberts has been clinical in his one dribble pull-ups and spot-up game. Here's Gage all the way, uncontested to the rim. He can't finish. It's rebounded by Bishop Walsh. Here's Roberts again. He loses the ball. That should be MHS's ball. He just lost it on its own accord, and that's exactly what happened. Roberts just got ahead of steam there. Uh, Young stepped in to try to take a charge. There wasn't a whole lot of contact, and Roberts just lost the handle as they collided. Goes out of bounds. Uh, again, that's just Morgantown covering up really well in transition, whether it's off of a missed shot or a turnover. Uh, they've done an outstanding job uh, of getting back and cutting off uh, the players trying to fill the lanes so far for Bishop Walsh. And even at the point of attack, guys like Young stepping up to cut off the ball handler. Here's Gage with the right hand to the rim. Yes, sir. He's got nine. Morgantown leads 48-39. 2.30 remaining here, third quarter. Here's Mikey Williams, 2-3 zone by the Mohegans. Now to Dormu. Another long ball over the top for Williams. Drives and scores. That's a tough, tough finish. Seven-point lead. Nearly knocked free, they get it into the front court to Gage. Gage has been a more willing scorer off the dribble this season as opposed to last. Young's gonna fire up a deep three, ill-advised, that clinks off the backboard, and here comes Robinson. Robinson gonna take it all the way by himself and an offensive foul as he knocks down Brooks Gage. We've seen that a couple of times. These Bishop Walsh players are just driving into a horde of white jerseys with nowhere to go out of control. These are going to be some important minutes, Daniel, for Morgantown High. Sharon Young checks out. That's their primary ball handler. They're going to give him a little bit of a rest for the fourth quarter, and then it'll be Gage. That'll run the offense here in the meantime. Yeah, we saw it last night in the first half uh, when Young was dealing with some foul trouble, picked up two fouls in the second quarter. They tried Bobby Powell back there for a little bit and, and then moved Brooks Gage onto the ball when Powell had some struggles, and he really was able to distribute well. Like you said, much more willing to put the ball on the floor this year, and, and it has boded well for Morgantown with the ability to have him be their primary ball handler. Big three from Poland. The answer on the other end is no good by Mikey Allen. Morgantown has the lead with nine total minutes remaining in this game after that big Alec Poland three the senior delivers. Here's Gage. Surely not, it's off the front of the rim. That would have been massive. 10 point advantage, Williams. Now to Roberts, he retreats away from that double team. Now he'll look to take Gage off the bounce and drives the lane, he kicks, he's fouled. Foul whistled on Morgantown High. On Brody Davis, that's his third. And it'll be a short rest for Sharon. Young will have to come right back into the game for Brody Davis. So the inbound for Bishop Walsh. Haven't had many of these in this game. Mikey Allen back up top to Dormu. Now to Roberts. 55 seconds left to play. Roberts, the runner, is no good. He follows his shot, however. Now fades away on the baseline and scores. Travis Roberts picked up an offer from Jacksonville State. You can see why there. He's been their most consistent source of offense. Defender fell down. Morgantown with the advantage, pass ahead to Poland as a shot knocked out of bounds by that same man, Travis Roberts. That was interesting by Gage there, Daniel. He throws the pass trying to lead him for the layup, where instead he could have had the three in transition. Gage wanted to get him on the rim. It's interesting. It's a decision that has to be made when you're playing at a size disadvantage like Morgantown is. Uh, with Davis on the sideline, Poland's your biggest guy at six foot one, and it's just tough to deal with particularly when you know you've got five shooters on the floor, to be completely honest, uh, to send a guy to the basket like that. Uh, but again, you're looking for the easiest look, and in a situation like that, for a guy as physical as Poland, he's held his own on the inside. You want to give him a chance uh, potentially to continue that. Uh, again, it just doesn't work out for Morgantown. Eight-point lead. We'll see if Bishop Walsh will hold for the final shot. That's the second foul on Gage. They'll watch the last 20 seconds from the bench. Here's Mikey Allen. And it appears the Spartans will look for the last. T.J. Robinson 
guarded by Sharon Young. Morgantown sticking in some variation of that zone defense. 10 seconds left to play. Robinson looking for the screen from Williams. He drives to the rim with a left hand. No, I think he got away with the travel as well as Poland pulls it down, and that'll be the final action of the third quarter of play. Eight-point lead with eight minutes to go in this one, Daniel, and Morgantown starting to sense that they might have a little bit of a minor miracle on their hands. It, you know, Luke, we talked about it off the air at halftime. The first few minutes of that third quarter were going to be the key. If Bishop Walsh came out, asserted their will, got up and down the floor, got easy buckets in transition, uh, you thought that they might have a chance to come back and, and really – uh, prove why they're so highly touted as compared to a team like Morgantown that is highly ranked in the state of West Virginia but really doesn't have any national prominence. Uh, but Morgantown, we knew, was going to have to stand up for those first couple minutes. And they go to the end of the third quarter with the same advantage that they had that they ended the first half with. And, and at this point, you have to be proud of that. Uh, you have to be convinced that you have the ability to win this basketball game simply because you have outclassed Bishop Walsh for the last two quarters in terms of effort, in terms of pace, in terms of what you've been doing, getting up and down the floor, forcing turnovers. Bishop Walsh is completely out of sorts against this zone uh, from Morgantown. Uh, the Spartans just simply haven't been able to figure out how to get open looks. It's, it's really been either a, a lapse for Morgantown that allows an open shot for Roberts or Robinson getting by his defender and getting into the lane to make something happen. Beyond that, they've really struggled to deal with the zone from Morgantown uh, simply because th there's little to no off-ball movement in this offense uh, that Dan Priest put together for Bishop Walsh, uh, which when you've got, even with the seven-footer Patterson on the bench, they've got uh, Nakushevitz on the inside uh, low, and they've got Roberts in the high post. That's 6'8 six, and 6'6 six, six that you can play high-low with. I know Roberts is more of a wing, uh, but if you can play high-low with that kind of size against this Morgantown zone, you should be able to dominate. They haven't gone to that at all. Tough finish there from Mikey Williams, and that's really how Bishop Walsh has been able to keep themselves in the game. It's just those contested 15-footers. Here's Young in transition, now to Goins. Alec Poland with 14 points to pace all Morgantown scores. Brooks Gage has nine, as does Jalen Goins. Young with eight, Brody Davis with eight, and a three for Ethan Mara. On the other side of things is Travis Roberts with 15 to lead all scores. T.J. Robinson with 12, and Mikey Williams with 11. We have a foul away from the ball here. I'll tell you, ball movement. It's this is a a public school against a prep school, and Morgantown is just moving the ball significantly. But it's not particularly close. Yeah, and you have to think about the fact uh, that for Morgantown, you're putting five kids on the floor that have played multiple years together. For Bishop Walsh, uh, Dan Preet really, for the most part, is changing the roster every single year. There's going to be some holdovers. But you think about the fact Mike Williams has been on this roster, officially at least, for two days. Yeah. So uh, you have guys that have played together for a very long time for Morgantown, some of them going back all the way to elementary school, whereas Bishop Walsh, this early in the season, you still got guys trying to figure each other out. Here's Brody Davis. First minute and 20 seconds gone here in the fourth quarter. Morgantown leading by six. Here's Young looking to take his defender, Robinson, off the dribble. Makes the pass to the corner. Gage open for three. Yes, sir. He's in double figures. Morgantown leading by nine. 90 seconds gone here. The fourth and final quarter of play. Here's Roberts. Again, Morgantown still in their zone as Dormu looks to break it. Driving baseline turned away by Davis. Back to Dormu. Thought about a deep three. Now to Williams to the free throw line. Gets his defender in the air. Now forces one up. No good. Rebound controlled by Sharon Young. And even more impressive when you talk about this Morgantown team. Six minutes to play here, fourth quarter. Here's Goins as his shot blocked by Mikey Williams. As you talk about the players that aren't here anymore, as Dave Tallman will take a timeout. You know, we had this conversation about uh, their crosstown counterparts in University High, uh, but Morgantown, you think about uh, the Bechtels and the Priors and the Poffenbergers from last year's team. Uh, Dave Tallman's able to reload. Brody Davis made a huge step up. Jalen Goins as well. Sharon Young was a key player last year, don't get me wrong, but he's ever improved. 
I understand it's a big school with a lot of talent to pull from, but you're not recruiting. What you have is what you have, and Dave Tallman has nurtured some serious talent here. That's absolutely right. The development in this Morgantown program is something under Dave Tallman that uh, has really become one of the hallmarks. I mean, you, you look at a guy like Carson Poffenberg, you talk about him, that came in even as a sophomore or junior and was really a, a raw big guy that you saw had some skill, you saw had some natural ability, uh, but needed to put all the pieces together. Turn around by the time he's a senior, uh, he's a legitimate guy that can score at multiple levels and is playing uh, at, at a high level now at, at Shepard uh, in, in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. You, you talk about guys like Xavier Pryor that come in here as raw athletes and, and can go out and, and be outstanding players on state championship caliber teams or last year a state runner up. And now you look at what they've done. Brody Davis, as a sophomore last year, you saw the potential in the in the amount of times that he was able to get on the floor, uh, but it, it was just flashes. Now he's doing it consistently. Same goes for Jalen Goins, who was a rotation guy last year, didn't get a ton of minutes. You look at the bench for Morgantown, you've got Cam Dancer, who was a JV kid last year, Ethan Morrow, who was a JV kid last year, who's out on the floor for you now in a big moment. Uh, that's really something you have to credit uh, to the ability to develop guys in this program uh, that you don't necessarily see at this kind of level around the state of West Virginia. Three on the way from Mikey Allen. That is absolutely massive, and it'll prompt a timeout by Dan Preet. As again, Daniel, I'll go back to my original point. It's really not, it's for lack of adjustments, Bishop Walsh has been able to hang in this game. It's just their ability, specifically Mikey Williams, uh, Travis Roberts, and you saw the big three there, just their ability to hit big contested shots as they haven't gotten quality looks. Ball movement's been stagnant, but when you have talented players that are able to bail you out of big situations, that's what's kept them in the game. Uh, that's right, and it's, it's a tough line to walk if you're being completely honest you live by the sword you die by the sword with that kind of that kind of deal where you're just relying on the natural ability of your players you're not putting them in a lot of structure you're relying on your guys to hit shots you're relying on them to create opportunities for themselves and when you have elite players like this that's great uh, but when those shots aren't falling you find yourselves in situations like this where uh, you're playing a, a program like Morgantown that plays so well together, plays so well on the defensive end, isn't going to give you anything easy, a and now uh, you're coming down to it, trying to fight by it by the skin of your teeth now in the fourth quarter. Six-point lead from Morgantown, just under six minutes to play here, fourth quarter. They get it into Gage as they look to attempt to break the pressure. Going, guarded by T.J. Robinson, gets the ball into the front court, 5.30 remaining. Goins using up the dribble. And now to Mara. Ethan Mara, the senior, standing at six foot even. Gage now to Poland. Size up his defender, Daniel Dormu, or rather, that's Travis Roberts. Now to Gage, gets around his defender, makes the pass to the corner. Brody Davis thought about a look from distance, but Morgantown's just content to run clock. Mara will penetrate, kick to Gage, three on the way. Yes, sir. Third triple of the game for Gage. He's got 15 now three of which coming from distance, as I alluded to earlier. Four minutes, 50 seconds remaining here, fourth quarter, and the Morgantown lead is nine. Here's Dormu, right wing, sizing up the zone defense. He works it to Dancer, or rather, uh, Allen. Allen back to Dormu, all the way to the rim, an athletic finish there for the man who's garnered Division One offer from Maine. That's his first points of the game. Seven point lead now, here's Mara into the front court. Looking to spin away from Robertson, instead, he gives it to Poland. Poland, driving around Williams to the rim as a shot knocked out of bounds. I have to say this about Mikey Williams. He brought his lunch pail with him when he showed up on campus 48 hours ago. He's been impactful on both ends of the floor. Uh, that's right, Williams really a physical defender. Uh, gets up into guys' bodies and has really active hands trying to take the ball off of guys. And then when you get him in the offensive end of the floor, uh, he's not a great outside shooter, but going towards the basket, he's always under control. He's always got his feet underneath him. And that pull-up game is, is really something that he thrives on, that, that 12 to 17 foot range uh, where he's able to find space and, and knock down an open shot. 15 footer no good from Young, trying to follow his miss, last touch by Bishop Walsh. 
Ian Poland had a shot to get the ball back. Seven point lead, 4.07 left to play fourth quarter. Morgantown has not budged from this 2-3 zone. Out of the high post, this is Roberts turning, looking to score, flips it up on the right, yes sir, Travis Roberts. I mentioned how impressive Mikey Williams has been on both ends of the floor. Roberts' ability in the half court offensively, he's certainly been the best player in that regard for Bishop Walsh today. 340 remaining and a foul. T.J. Robinson, bump Goins. And again, that's just a case of what we've seen a couple times Bishop Walsh run into, uh, trying to guard with your arms and your body instead of your legs, instead of your feet trying to get in front of the defender. Goins started to get a step going right uh, around Robinson, and he just leaned into him. Uh, again, put that arm bar out with the right arm, extended with the left to give the impression that he was sliding in front. And, and again, he just bumps Goins back towards midcourt. Uh, you can't do that, and if the referee's got any kind of angle to make the call, he's going to. Goins gets both. One of many players in double figures for Morgantown. He's the third, him, Poland, and Gage. And the lead back to seven. Here's Roberts. Fading away in the baseline. That one ill-advised. It's rebounded by Sharon Young. Young in transition, down low to Poland. Poland hesitant to go up initially. Now earns the trip to the line as he's fouled. Third foul on Mike Williams. Poland is a perfect six for six from the free throw line today. And again, that play just set up uh, by a smart decision, to, to put it simply, by Sharon Young. He grabs and goes. He's got Roberts out on his right hip, going down the right side of the right side of the floor. Puts the ball in his left hand. Is able to put Roberts in jail, so to speak, as he's bringing the ball down the floor. Runs that right hip into him, keeps him away from the basketball. Sees Poland up ahead, really threads the needle. There was a guy right on top of Poland, being Williams, that ended up picking up the foul. And he's able to put it right on a dime, right where Poland needs it to be able to step into it and put it up towards the rim in one motion. And he's able to pick up the foul. Poland splits on that trip. His first miss from the free throw line today. Eight point lead from Morgantown. Driving Roberts, unable to score, but the tap is in by Mikey Williams. 3.05 to go. Pass up ahead to Poland. Poland again this time, the end one. He'll go to the line. <laughs> Foul on Dormu. Poland, MHS's leading scorer, approaching the game's leading scorer. Has a chance to make it a nine point game with this free throw. Have a stoppage, have some moisture accumulated on that uh, far basket that Mikey Williams is attending to. What else can you say about Alec Poland? His off ball movement, I, I think, is his most important trait. You know, a senior leader on this team, Daniel, but it always seems like, especially in this game, somebody needed to be in the right place at the right time to make a play, and it's been Poland more often than not. Absolutely right, and we talked about it earlier. Everything he does offensively comes within the flow. He's not going to force a shot. He's not going to do anything too far beyond what he already knows he's capable of. And that's just the key connecting piece you need on a team of this caliber if you're Morgantown. He's got 18. Morgantown has nine. Three minutes left to play here, fourth quarter. Interesting here from Morgantown. Going man to man, I mean, they've really kept Bishop Walsh out of anything offensively for most of this game with that 2-3 zone. But now, three minutes to play, up nine. Dave Tallman going to go man-to-man, -man, mix things up. A and I guess uh, with Patterson off the floor, you've got the luxury of being able to do that, you could say. Uh, you know, Nekrashevich is six foot eight, but uh, he's not nearly the physical type of player that Patterson is. Poland, you would think, can deal with him pretty well. Uh, but again, just getting these guys for Bishop Walsh that are so quick off the bounce, isolated on the outside uh, against your defenders is something you have to worry about. Open three from Robinson is no good. Something else, Daniel, what are the luxuries of playing that zone defense? We have a foul on the backcourt against Mikey Williams, or rather Mikey Allen. One of the advantages of playing that zone defense, 
You got two and a half minutes left to play and just three team fouls from Morgantown. You can be as aggressive as you want. Uh, that's right. You can get up in the lane. Uh, I don't necessarily know you're selling out for steals at this point, but you are trying to force turnovers. You are trying to slow down possessions for Bishop Walsh really you know, gum up the gears of that offense as they try to move the ball around uh, simply because now with Young hitting that free throw, you've got a double digit lead. Two and a half minutes, you know that Bishop Walsh can score in bunches, uh, but they haven't been able to string them together so far tonight, today. Young had been silent in terms of scoring the basketball since the first quarter, and now he enters double figures. He had eight, now make it 10. And the Morgantown lead is nine. 2.37 to go here, fourth quarter. Here's Roberts looking to drive. In the lane, he gets that 15-footer to go. That'll prompt another timeout by Dan Preet. Brutal scenes in the Morgantown student section. Somebody from the back row started the overrated chant. He was shushed. Then Roberts came down, hit a 15-footer, and uh, he's getting pummeled down there to our immediate left. So an ill-advised chant because we've still got a lot of ball game left to play in a very talented team. Two and a half minutes left. If the score is less than 20 points, yeah. you, can't, you can't start uh, spinning anything like that out yet. Uh, obviously, you know, high school kids, Saturday afternoon, you want to have fun at the game. <laughs> uh, but at this point, uh, I, particularly a team of Bishop Walsh's caliber, uh, you don't want to be the one with egg on your face at the end. And uh, Travis Roberts, uh, to his credit, he signed with Jacksonville State. In my opinion, he's, he's played at a, a much higher level than that even uh, in this game. And from a college perspective, looks like he's going to be an absolute steal oh, yeah. for an Atlantic Sun program in Jacksonville State. Uh, but uh, he's shown the ability with that mid-range pull-up, with the ability to hit uh, the three from the perimeter and a couple times get all the way to the rim, uh, that he's got the type of guy that has the ability, even down nine here with a couple of minutes left, to take over, score three or four buckets in a row, and if you get some stops on defense, put you right back in this one. Uh, he's the guy, if I'm Morgantown, that I'm worried about when he's got the ball in his hands at this point. Yeah, 19 yesterday is 21 today. Here's an outlet pass. Oh, my goodness, that is dangerous. Mikey Williams comes up with a steal, but he throws it away, and here comes Morgantown high. Here's Gage. Gage now to Davis, and Morgantown can just be content to kill some clock here. Davis back up top to Gage. Surely at some point, Bishop Walsh will have to foul. 2.10 remaining. Nine minutes left to play. Here's Davis, or rather, Gage, back up top to Young. Young, down low, Poland turns and scores. Two minutes left now. Bishop Walsh will have to score quickly. Dan Preet has been teed up for a second time as he throws a pin into the bleachers, and he will exit the premises. Both times that Dan Preet has received technical fouls in this game, it's not been anything particularly offensive that he's done with the officials. He simply won't give it up when he doesn't get a call. First, it's the travel in the first half uh, with Brooks Gage that wasn't a travel, that uh, he was in the officials' ear the entire time, and, and finally, a possession and a half later, he'd had enough and hit him with one. This time, Mike Williams comes up with the steal, comes down. His feet get tied up with Brooks Gage. It's incidental contact. He's screaming over on the sideline that he wants a foul. Mike Williams doesn't even react like it's a foul, and he's the one involved in the play. Still, again, almost two possessions later, Preet is still in the official's ear, and again, finally, he's had enough of it, and he gets tossed. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Preet has left the building. It is a 13-point lead for Morgantown High with 155 left to play. Alec Poland. Have to do the official totals here in a second. I believe has 22, and 10 of those points come from the free throw line. That would lead all scorers. As I mentioned, Roberts had 21. Morgantown needing to get the ball in bounds. They do so to Davis. And now it's just the issue of time as Brooks Gage is fouled. It's on Allen, he now has three fouls. A minute, 52 seconds left to play. 16 points now for Brooks Gage. And a 14 point lead for the Mohegans. Next one up and in. 
71-56. 15-point lead, and now the chance of overrated. Rain down here at the Rowdy Center. Deep three from Robinson on the way. Too long, rebounded by Gage. Gage ahead to Young, down low to Poland, has the positioning. Two more points for Alec Poland, the senior. Unbelievable effort today from Alec Poland with well over 20 points. Allen, a right corner three is too long. Bishop Walsh can't buy a bucket. They look to chase the loose change. Williams can't score, tries to keep it alive, and Goins pulls it down. Goins into the front court, now to Poland, and the senior will wisely slow up the offense. Goins, skip pass to Gage. Under a minute left to play. Bishop Walsh has come to Morgantown and have been slain as Brooks Gage is fouled. Gage to shoot the free throws. 53 seconds left to play. You know, to come in and beat a prep school is one thing. To hang about a 20-point lead or make it a 19-point lead, 18-point lead as he misses the free throw, that is an absolute statement. That'll put certainly every team in the state of West Virginia on notice. Here's Williams, forces one up and scores. At this point, if you're Morgantown, I, I think moving forward, obviously you look at the schedule you've got coming up the rest of the way, uh, and you have to be confident going into every every game you've got the rest of the season. It's a weird comparison to make, uh, but I'm going to make it. With the run that WVU men's soccer made this year, one thing that Dan Stratford, the, the coach of the Mountaineers, said, we have proven to ourselves uh, through a couple of the wins that they had early in the season that they had the right to be confident going into every single game that they played this season. And with what they did last night against Cabell Midland and what they've done against Bishop Walsh today as Dave Tallman clears out the bench, Morgantown has given themselves the right to be confident going into every single game they play the rest of the way. And being able to have that kind of mindset in and of itself is among the most important things that you can have in the sport of basketball. Fresh five coming on the floor for Dave Tallman. Brody Davis at the free throw line. Gets that one to go, he'll check out. So, Ethan Wise is out there, Brody Savage as well, Bobby Powell. Along with some new faces we'll identify here in just a moment. Bishop Walsh looking to score quickly. Is he ever, it's checked in. Morgantown pulls down the loose ball. So there you have it, 75 to 58. Ball into the front court for a final time. And there's the buzzer, a Christmas miracle. And the Spartans slain in Morgantown by the Mohegans. 75 to 58. Just an absolutely clinical and perfect performance for Dave Tallman as this side remains unbeaten. And they've slain what we argued in the pregame would be the most difficult game of their schedule. And they win it in emphatic fashion as the students will rush the floor. Daniel Woods, 75 to 58, the final score. We'll give you our final point totals, but your closing thoughts on what has been probably one of the signature wins of the Dave Tallman era. Absolutely right, Luke. And you look at the performance for Morgantown today, and nobody did anything special, if we're being completely honest. Nobody went above and beyond what they're capable of in, in, in a normal game for Morgantown today. This is the performance that the Mohegans have put on all year. Starting last night with Cabell Midland, even before that, taking on Preston at home earlier in the year. This team is balanced. They've got five guys on the floor that can shoot it. They've got five guys on the floor that can put it on the deck and go to the basket, pretty much at all times. And again, it's guys playing within themselves. It's guys playing together. Today it was Alec Poland putting up the numbers. Uh, but when you've got a team like this that you know, has six to seven guys that can be the one to do that on any given night. 
uh, that's that's as dangerous a team as you're going to find. Bishop Walsh found that out today. And uh, again, you've got a coach in Dave Tallman that has a system that works, that developed players into it. And in this kind of situation against a team in Bishop Walsh that is pieced together and is still figuring each other out, you run into a buzzsaw like that for Morgantown, and, and you're not going to respond well if if you don't take that first punch in stride, and that's that's not what happened today for the Spartans. Final point totals. Alec Poland was awarded a medal there for the G-Force Lock and Save Holiday Classic. He finishes with 24. Brooks Gage with 18. 11 for Jalen Goins. 10 for Sharon Young. 9 for Brody Davis, and a 3 off the bench for Ethan Mara. Mikey Williams with 15, and the other side of things for Bishop Walsh. Mikey Allen finishes with six. TJ Robinson with 12. A lone field goal for Daniel Dormu, who finishes with two. 